Romans chapter 6 from verse number 23. Hallelujah. Romans is in the New Testament. Romans chapter 6 from verse number 23. I will. For the wages of sin is death. For the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading and his word in the name of Jesus. Please, you may make yourself comfortable in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the last thing God will give you praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We thank you for yet another day. We bless your holy name, Lord, we exalt you. As we gather before you, Spirit of the living God, we ask, come and take control, Lord. Put your word in my mouth, O oh God, and let your word that proceed out of my mouth to your people. Let your word come on fire in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is no distraction as we start. I shall be teaching on what I tie to the wages of sin. The wages of sin. The consequence for sin. The penalty for sin. What happened when a man sin? What happened? Before and after. What happened when you sin? According to the scripture we just read, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Now, who is the gift of God? The gift of God is the word of God. John 1 1. The word of God is Jesus. And the word of God is God. The gift of God is the word of God. The word of God is Jesus. And the word of God is God. In John chapter 10 from verse 30, Jesus told us that I and my father are one. That tells us that Jesus is also God. Now, I said before that whenever a word, whenever God releases a word, whether negative or positive, that word becomes law. Anytime that God speaks a word, whether the word is negative or the word is positive, that word becomes law. And the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. Meaning that at any time a man sin. That man, the consequence for that sin is death. Now, before, if you go to the book of Joshua, chapter 6, the Bible explained to us if you read all through or try to understand that scripture from verse 1 all the way down, you will understand that the people of Jericho trust not God. They do not believe in God and that was a sin. That was the offense before God. That was the reason why God ordered that they should be destroyed. A woman Rahab, the Bible calls her a harlot Rahab. She is a harlot, she was a harlot, living in the same territory. But the Bible says, and the Lord instructed that she should be spared. Ordinarily, as a harlot, she has sinned against God. But the Bible says because she had faith in the God of heaven, and because she was able to preserve the lives of the people who were sent there to spy, the Bible says, and the Lord ordered that they should be saved. And Rahab and her household were saved when destruction came. Because if people do not believe in God, that was a sin, and there was automatic penalty for it. 
the automatic consequence of it, which was death, not just only for them, but for the whole city at large. But the question is, is it the whole city that will not be in the world? The people of Nineveh, the Bible explained to us that they sinned against God and they were punished for it. In Sodom and Gomorrah, the Bible told us that they sinned against God and one of the sins is the sin of sexual immorality. Another sin is the sin of loss. Another sin is the sin of rape. This were the sin that they sinned against God, man having sex with man, woman with woman. And this brought death upon them. And the Bible says, and they were all consumed by God himself. When the Lord sent the angel of the Lord there, they were all destroyed. Why? Because they sinned against God. And because that word pronounced by God as death any time that a man sinned, then they had to die because they sinned. That was before grace came. That was before Christ came. But now that Christ has come, does it not mean that when a man sinned, you don't die? The answer is, yes, you still die. But it might not be immediate as it was in the Old Testament. Why? Because now, man dies spiritually at any time when you sin against God. The consequence for any evil that you do is before God is the result of what you get. The war that you are seeing today between nations of the world, the famine, the tribulation, the trouble that you are seeing between nations of the world today is as a result of sin. These are consequences and penalty of sin. It was not so from the beginning. It was not in the agenda of God. But when sin came, all of this accompanied sin. That is why the Bible says, for all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. In St. Romans 3, verse 23. So when the glory of God is taken away from any individual, what accompanies that life is shame. When the man sin, one of the things that happens to the man is that the glory is taken away from him. When the glory of God is taken away from man, man struggles on his own. Why? Because God does not answer sin. And as long as you sin, the presence of God is taken away from you. That is why in the book of Psalm 51, from verse 13, David was crying to the God of heaven. He said, take not away that spirit from me. Why? Because he knew that any time when a man sin, the spirit of God that is in you will leave you. And that spirit of God that is in you is what clothes you with glory. The spirit of God that is in any man is what holds in man with glory. So when that spirit of God is taken away from man, man enters into a new economy that is shame. You enter into a new economy that is pain, struggle, tribulation. Why? Because the glory that is supposed to attract favor is no longer there. When the glory of God is upon a man, you don't struggle. When the glory is upon an individual, it attracts favor. It attracts grace. That is why I define grace as a divine partiality. Grace. When the glory of God is upon a man, you can enter into a place where there is an interview going on. Sometimes you don't even apply. A brother was here last week. I wish he's here today. After the service, we were praying there. And the brother told me that he's going for an interview on Monday. And this interview in other bank, he never applied for. He said he was driving and he got a call. I wish he's here. He was driving and he got a call. And when the call came in, they asked him, Are you Mr. Jesus? And he said, Yes, the brother from Cameroon. He sat here last week with the Gambula, white one. Are you Mr. So so and so? He said, Yes. Can you send me your document? Who are you? I am from so so and so bank. 
We are hired and I saw your document, I saw your CV in the hand of somebody. And he asked, who is this person? But they could not be able to explain it. Now you did not apply. When the glory of God is upon a man, he attracts grace. Does it mean that there was nobody who applied for this same position? Does it mean that there is no one that is qualified for the whole of you? What now happened? Because the favor of God picked him out. What happened to the life of Esther? Esther was not the best decorated of beauty for among the maidens. But the favor of God was on her. And that favor of God spoke for her and the king would choose her among others. Even though there were beautiful, yellow, beautiful dancers dancing around the bed. As a matter of fact, Esther was shy because Esther was not from that city. Esther was shy believing that she was not going to qualify because she knew nobody in that place. But there are people whose family are from that city. In fact, there are people that I believe their father their father are working in the same palace. So they believe that through my father's influence, I am going to be selected. In fact, those ones were well decorated. Five beautiful tall ladies dancing before the queen, before the king. But Esther came. And the favor of God was on Esther. And the favor looked at her. And the favor separated her. And the favor celebrated her. So when the glory of God is upon the man, you don't struggle. Things happen for you. And after a Monday, 10 a.m. in the morning, I called him. I said, Brother, what happened? He said, The interview went successful. I was still thinking maybe it was fraud when he was telling me that night. I was thinking because it's possible that somebody can just call you and want to deceive you to bring money, to bring this money. It's happening in this land. So I was thinking in the same people. I told him, Be careful. But when he got there, he was interviewed inside the same bank. Not outside consultant, he was interviewed inside the same bank. For a position he never applied for. When the glory of God is upon a man, the glory of God speaks for man. But the consequence of any sin is that you suffer even when you are qualified. Even when you are qualified, you suffer. Why? Because the one who has the capacity to talk things around. The Bible says the heart of a king is in my hand. Like the tunnel of water, I turn it wherever that pleases me. So God is the one that turned the heart of a king to favor anyone. So when God is not with you, how then do you think that God is going to turn the heart of the person that you are looking for favor from? The person you are looking for favor from, it takes the God of heaven to turn his heart to either say yes or no. Because the truth is, what you are looking for is favor, it's not your right. Even if it's your right, even, there are times that right are deprived. The consequence of sin, the wages of sin. Just imagine, as a loving father or a loving parent we are, going on a visit to visit your child in school, buying your child a brand new car just to surprise your child in and get into your child accommodation or the hostel, and then you meet your child committing a kind of sin that troubled your heart. Let us be clear with ourselves and sincere. Will you still hand over that child to that child? No matter the love that you have for that child, you must go back to the car. Why? Because you are disappointed. Why? Because you feel pain at that time because you never expected that. So the consequence of her art or his art at that particular time is that he could no longer accept or get what you went there with. That is how our God is. So when a man sin, the consequence for your sin, the consequence for that sin that you commit at any time is that something must happen in your life. It might be life now or life eternal. But something must happen at any time that somebody sin. The wages of sin. The Bible called sin when, when John was addressing himself. When John, the son of Zebedee, was addressing sin, he called sin. He said, I am writing to you, little to me. 
So the men that commit sin, the people that commit sin are not men. The people that are supposed to commit sin are the people who are ignorant of sin, which are children. So if you commit sin, it's because you are not yet grown. If you have grown to become a man, you are not supposed to commit sin because the Bible says, and I write to you, you, because you know him and you have strength. And I write to Edda because you knew him before the very beginning. And if you go to the book of Second Corinthians, the Bible explains it in details to us. How does sin bring us down? What sin does in the life of every individual? In Romans chapter 5, from verse 1, the Bible told us, in verse 1 specifically, the Bible said, we are justified by faith. We as a people are justified by faith. We have peace with God through His Son. So one of the things that the death of Jesus has come to do is that He justifies us through our faith. And He brings us to the place of peace with God. But eternal life is not for men. Eternal life is given to men that will receive it. Jesus did not come to die for only believers. Jesus never came to die for only Christians. Jesus came to die for Christians, Muslim, Buddhism, name it whatever, pagans, every single human being that is born of woman. Jesus died for all. But the death of Jesus on the cross of Calvary for all can only guarantee you one automatic thing, reconciliation. He can guarantee you peace with God. He can justify you, but it will not give you eternal life. Eternal life is not in you to work it out. In Romans chapter 5, from verse 9, the Bible said we are justified by the blood. It is through the blood of Jesus that we are brought out of the wrath of God. So man was under the wrath of God. We were under the anger of God. So when Jesus came through his blood, we were made justified and we were brought out of that wrath that was placed on us by God. But that is the only thing he can give you, which is automatic. But the next other thing that is more important to our life as a believer is eternal life. But that eternal life is given, not by the cross. It is given by receiving and believing. John chapter 1, verse 1. So when any time a man sin, there is a consequence that is attached to sin. In Romans chapter 5, verse 12, verse 10, 11, and 12, the Bible explains to us in details. The Bible began by telling us that we were reconciled by God, even though we were enemies of God. But we were reconciled through the death of His Son. We were reconciled to God. So it brings us reconciliation. But if a man remains in sin, even though Christ has come to give it to you, he has tried to redeem you, he has come to justify you, but if you remain in sin, you will still have everlasting condemnation. When John the Apostle, the son of Zebedee, was speaking in the book of First John, chapter 2, from verse 1, he said, I write to you, little children, that you should not sin. For perhaps if any one of us here, he said, if anyone sin, you should know that you have an advocate in Christ Jesus. And he went further again to explain it again. He said, John, first John chapter 1, from verse 10, 11. And he explained to us that if anyone sin, you should know that your sin has been forgiven by his name. So your sin is forgiven anytime. Anytime at all that you sin and you confess is forgiven. But the consequence for the sin stands. The consequence for that sin. Whatever the sin is for, the consequence of it stands, but your sins are forgiven. That is the most important thing on the cross. The cross means that the sin is forgiven. So when Jesus came, what Jesus changed is the automatic death that was attached to the Old Testament, which was the law. If you read it, the Bible explains to us that we little children. He said, while we are still little children as heirs, we are under the law 
of slavery by the spiritual persecutor and the spiritual forces of this earth. Who is the spiritual forces of this earth? It's the devil. So he called the sin little children. Who are all the spiritual forces of this earth? But when Jesus came in Hebrew, chapter 9, the Bible explained to us that after that Jesus came and died, his death has settled everything. But it does not end there. He needed a signature, a signature to seal it, that I have paid the penalty for them on the cross. And anytime anyone remember me and now pray through me, God is no longer going to destroy you, but God is going to remember the God that has died on the cross for you. God is going to remember his son that died. So the Bible said in that Hebrew chapter 9, the Bible explained to us that after that he died, he carried his blood. He carried his blood to the corner, to the tabernacles of our God, the city of our God, to the holies of holy, the altar of God, where the holy one sits. The Bible says he presents the blood before him. Not the blood of goats, okay, but the blood of the innocent one who had never sinned but was made sin just for you and I to be righteous. He was made sin. He was never a sinner. He never committed sin. But God made him sin so that you and I can be righteous. And because any time that God pronounced the word, that word become law. And since that word of sin is dead, for God to kill Jesus, he had to carry sin. So the moment that Jesus carried everyone's sin, God killed him. Because that was the law. And he will not save you if he had not died. So God will not kill his own son except he sees sin in him. So what God does is that he caused him to carry sin. So the moment sin was seen in him, God killed him on the cross. So when he died, his blood was not a signature to prove that he had died. And when the blood got to the tabernacle of God, the Bible said the moment the blood was accepted, man was redeemed. That is why when Jesus resurrected, when the woman appeared before Jesus and he wanted to touch Jesus, he said, No, don't touch me. For I have not gone to my father. Why? Because if that woman had touched Jesus, the sin again would have automatically entered into Jesus again. And there is no way that God will still be pure. So it's either Jesus die again the second time. Because any time that God sin, you must die. So Jesus needs to die. He needed a better blood, a holy life to save a life. Because sin came into this life through one man. And through another, sin had to go. So one had to pay for it. So the innocent one came to pay for what he never committed. So when the blood gets to the altar, the holy of holy, the moment the blood was poured as a sacrifice on that altar, the moment the blood was atoned, the Bible says man was saved. But that saving, that saving is the reason why you sin today. You don't die. But that does not mean that if you sin and you do not repent of your sin, you will automatically go to heaven. It's a lie. What that happened to us is that grace not stayed. Grace not abide. That even though you sin, you will no longer die instantly again as it was before. Grace now speaks for you for a time being for you to come back to repentance. So there is a grace given to you for a period to come back to him. But if you refuse to come back to him and you die in the place of this sin, the consequence for that your act is hell fire. The consequence for that act is hell fire. But if any man realize and come back to God and cry to God, the Bible says that as many that received him and believed in him, not just receiving him, you must first receive and then believe in him. Because you will not just receive him and not believe in him. You must receive and believe in him. To them and our four sons. And every son is a head. And every head comes from a kingdom. And that kingdom is the kingdom of his father, which will now bring us back to him through righteousness of him. So we become righteous by our faith in Christ. So it is important to understand that any time that any man sin against God for whatsoever reason, there is a penalty for that sin. What is the sin? You and I know 
every single person born of a woman knows the sin that he or she is committing. And there is no sin that is greater than another. All sin are equal before God. Whether it's a sin of light telling, whether it's a sin of adultery, sin of fornication, whether it's a sin of murder, whatever sin it is, every sin is equal before God. So you will not say because I just it's just only lie now. If that lie is equivalent the same way to that of a man who commits murder, to that of a man who commits adultery. So every sin is sin, and no man is without sin. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Unfortunately enough for us, all of us have sinned. All of us have still sinned. So does grace now mean that we continue sin, continue sin, and nothing happen? Yes, nothing might happen physically, but there is a reward. There is a reward for what you are going to. There is a reward. That is why you see that there are families who are caged. No matter what you do, no matter how many people you help, no matter how many people you pray for, no matter what you do, nobody remembers it. You do good, whatever helps to you is that they pay you back with evil. You help people, at the end, what happens to you is that the people turn against you. Why? Because there is something that is speaking. Had Jesus not died for this person, yes, he has died for this person, but there is a part of this person that needs repentance. There is a part of these people's family that needs repentance. The Bible says that the soul of the father is precious to me, so is the soul of the son. But don't forget it's the same Bible that says unto fourth generation, meaning that as long as you come from that bloodline, whatever that happens, to your grandfather, if your grandfather had not repented of, and your father refused to repent of the same sickness, or in the same scenario, or the same sin, it transferred again to the son. If the son also could not come back to redeem the family, it's transferred to the next generation. And that is how it keep going on till the man will stand up one day and say, I refuse to. I refuse. Somebody must stand up to correct a mistake. Somebody must stand up to correct it. Sin has a consequence. Sin has a penalty. You might be taking a little from somebody, just a little, just a little from somebody, and you think you are smart, you are wise. You are smart, you are wise, but not caught. Yes, but there is a consequence that is attached to that small taking from somebody. That is why it is dangerous. For you to stand in a place where people are gossiping others. For you to be in the midst of people who are gossiping another. It is a dangerous thing because you automatically become a partaker of that heart immediately. And you inherit a sin for no reason. Do you know that if somebody steals something and you are aware? And you help the person, or perhaps hide the person, you have just automatically become a sinner also. Why? Because you knew about the act. Instead of you to tell this person to return it, hide the person from being killed. And to you, you are trying to save a life, but you have just seen also. Because you knew of it. The consequence of sin. I will run through it. Some of the consequences, because of time. I will run through it. One of the consequences of sin is that sin brings death. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin. We just explained. Second thing, sin brings separation. Separation. Isaiah 59, Proverbs 2. The Bible says, But your iniquity has separated you between you and your God. So sin separates a man from God. Because at any time when a man sins, the Spirit of God is taken from him. The Spirit of God that lives in you is not taken away from you. So you are separated, you are disconnected from communication. You are disconnected from having a relationship or business with the economy of heaven. You are disconnected from having things to do with Zion. So you can no longer progress in Zion. Your voice is no longer heard in Zion. Zion is the place of our God. So when you, are, when you see you are separated from Zion, you are separated from anything that has to do with Zion. 
I leave the kingdom of our Lord. You are separated from God. And as long as far as you are separated from God, you cannot receive from God. Because whatever you say will not get to God. Because there is that man, there is a force, there is a spirit that will always stand to accuse you. That is why Jesus was speaking the other day in John chapter 14, verse 30. He said, when the prince of this world came to me, he found nothing against me. Why the prince of this world come to you? Will he find something against you? If the prince of this world can find something against you, your prayers cannot be heard. You must live a righteous life to a point that the prince of this world will find nothing against you. The third reason is sin take the glory of God away from you. Romans 3 23. We cannot explain. The fourth is sin brings you into everlasting condemnation. Matthew 25 45. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 19. Everlasting for the believer. So sin brings you to everlasting for the believer. What that means is that anytime a man sins without repentance and a man dies, what happened to this man? When the people sin and they do not repent from the sin and they die, what happened to their soul? The soul will enter into everlasting condemnation, which is hell. And hell is never prepared for any children of God. Hell is prepared only for the devil and his angels. So if you refuse to repent, because the devil is the father of all sin, so when you sin, automatically you have just given a ticket for the devil. You have just told the devil your father when you sin. God cannot be associated with those kind of people. God cannot find himself with those kind of people. Automatically, you have given yourself a new father. And that father now becomes the devil. Because he's the father of all sin. He is the one that introduced sin. He's the father of sin. So when you sin, automatically you become a son or daughter to the devil. So if you die, the place where the devil dwells and lives is where you stay. Because you are going to your father's house. When Jesus was talking the other day to his disciples, he said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. I will go prepare a place. When I am done doing that, I will not take you. So for when I am there, you will be also. So anyone you follow is the place you go to. And if you follow the devil and you die, the grave will not speak for you. You will go to the place where the devil dwells and stay. If you follow God and you die, you go to the place where God stays with his reward. The next thing, sin cast us away from the presence of God. Psalm 51 verse 11. David was crying to God, cast me not away from thy presence. Why? Because in the presence of God there is revelation. In the presence of God there is healing. In the presence of God there is deliverance. In the presence of God there is fullness of joy. You cannot find joy outside God. Christ is the joy you are looking for. So in the presence of God is where you find joy. And David understood this. And that is why when David sinned against God, what David did was to run to God and cry to the God of heaven and say, cast me not away from thy presence. Because when you are cast away from the presence of God, it means that you are not separated from God. It means that you are not having no connection with God. So sin takes us away from the presence of God. And another thing that sin brought to our life is that sin brings pain. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 16. Pain. In the beginning of creation, it was never in the calendar or the agenda of God that man should suffer. It was not in the plan of God that man should suffer. It was a choice for man. Man chose to suffer. Man walked into the liberty of suffering. Man walked into the economy of suffering by himself. It was a choice. It was never in the calendar of God. So sin brings us to the place of pain. And the Bible says, and why the sin against God is says, in pain you will deliver. In pain you will suffer. In pain you will heal. So then a cause and that cause become law and that was stands so if you don't repent you suffer no matter how long you fast and pray you suffer because you are still in sin and you know a lot of people 
will be in place of prayer and fasting to God, yet they succeed against God. And when those prayers are not answered, they blame either the man of God, they blame the church, they blame the people around them, but they forget to blame themselves. They forget to blame themselves. Any time that something is not working, assess yourself, there is something that is wrong. There is something. It is not always about the devil. Do not forget that the devil will invite the devil to our life ourselves. The devil can know nothing about you unless it is given out for him. No matter that the devil is his spirit, but the devil has no access to you. That is why the other day when the children of God gather together with God, the Bible says, and the devil also came. That means in the garden of God, the devil even have access to God. And the Bible says, when the devil came, the Lord was the one that asked him, have you seen any man on this earth like my servant, Job? So it was God that revealed you Job sacred to the devil. And if you see, the devil start by talking. It's because you bless him, because the devil knew that he was blessed. He has everything. So this one is a physical evidence. So the devil said it's because he's blessed. And the Lord said, do this to him. The devil know nothing about you and he can ask nothing against you if no information is given to him. If you have not invited him. And any time that the devil has access to you, you become a property of the devil and he has access to access you to digest everything that is in you because you have seen and seen giving legality to God. Whenever a man sin, he gives the devil legality to act in your life. It's just like a computer or a phone. When you give your password of a phone to anybody, the person can access your phone. No matter what you hide in your phone, the person can access it. Why? Because you have given your password to it. The password given to the devil from any individual or from any of us is sin. So anytime you want the devil to operate in your life, don't sin. You have just invited him, you have given him the access, the password to your life. Then he can assess you and deal with you the way he wants. The next thing is that sin enslaves us to spiritual forces of this world. Galatians chapter 4, verse 3. He said, While we are under age, he said, We are slaves. While we are under age, we are slaves to the forces of this world. Why? Because under age, children are the ones that God is speaking that you are supposed to save these children who are ignorant. But adult is not supposed to be. So when you sin, you are under a slave. You become a slave to the forces of this world. The forces of this world is no other person than the one called the devil. So sin made us slave to him. Sin made us slave to the devil. So any man a man see, any time a man see, you become a slave in the hand of the devil. And you know what it means for one to be a slave to another. In case you have not seen it before, you can go to YouTube and check. You will see at least a video of how white treated black. Those ones they call those days as slaves. You don't have a say. Nothing, they do you anyhow. The place where I come from, kings still have slaves. And those slaves are treated anyhow. Because they bury them. So they become automatically the property of the kings. So when we sin, we become automatically the property of the devil. And we become a slave. And because we are his product, we are. People will be known to him, he now have access to do whatever he wants to do with us. The next thing is that sin brings destruction. Proverbs 14, verse 12. Sin brings destruction. Destruction. Why you see nations of the world are failing today is because of sin. Why you see many nations of the world failing today is because of sin. Why you see many families failing today is because of sin. It brings destruction. Many families are suffering. Children are suffering from what they know nothing about because of sin. Because you come from that bloodline. The Bible says the life of every living being is in the blood. And because you come from that bloodline, sin will bring you to a place of destruction. 
So you see nations fighting against each other because of sin. Pride is sin. Love is sin. So most of those nations of the world, why they are fighting each other is why? I want to be on top. I want to be superior. This one wants to be superior. That is pride. And that automatically becomes sin and God walk away. And you see them fighting each other. This one wants to attack this one. This one wants to attack this one. This one wants to attack this one. Why? Because sin has come in. Sin brings destruction in the family, in the life of the people, in the community, in society and nations of the world. Sin brings destruction. There was a time back then in Nigeria. I went with my family to a beach called a Lego beach in Lagos. And a woman was given a Range Rover Sport then by her husband. And she came to the same beach with a young guy. That every other person thought is either his son or her son or maybe a brother. And they came, packed the brand new Range Rover, closed it, and entered inside the beach just like every other person. And by the time they finished and everybody were going, she came back, the Range Rover is no longer in there. And you know one of one of one, one thing that happened to people that miss something. The first thing is that I what, I I pack here. You start using your leg to measure. This is you start calling people that you don't even know what you do. I pack here. And she starts up. I I it was here now. I pack here, but the rest of her has disappeared. The consequence of her act is that the gift given to her by her husband. I just imagine what she would tell her husband. I just imagine that you go to Nigeria and your car, the only, that is the only car that was stolen in the church. Or will she be bold enough to say, I went out with my sugar boy just for a little pleasure and they bring the bag of this again. How do you explain it? And she was rolling and shouting, what do I tell my husband? Oh, now she just realized what she would tell her husband. She never thought of this from the very beginning. What do I tell my husband? Oh, you have a husband. My God, you have a husband. So men are really suffering, sir. Do you know what it cost a man to buy a Range Rover Sport, brand new, give to a woman, and then this woman, with her wickedness, because that is what it is, carry the young guy to go flesh with what this man has. Yesterday I went to a major place, I think myself and the brother Simeon, we went to a major place in the afternoon and I saw some guys carrying more inside the same sort, from their head to their toe. They were well, it's not as if they poured the water. So that thing that I saw in their body was sweat. Let's assume that this is what the man is doing outside the country, sir. Somebody inside this sort to buy a car for a wife and then the wife carry this same car. Oh God. I wish Shad caught one of our legs. I wish that shark, when she entered that river, the shark caught one of her legs her leg, and then also the, the radio bar disappeared. So that this time she will know how to explain very well. Because this one, she can still find a place to lie. To lie and cover. It's possible that she can still look for a place to lie and cover it. Yes, that the husband is not there, I went to life. And she can go to any pastor and then lie to the pastor and then please just save my marriage. Save my marriage and the pastor might just succumb to her and say, okay, carry phone and say, it was so. I, the consequence of sin. I end here. Every sin committed by every single one of us, even though it is forgiven, any time that you sin against God is always forgiven. I want you to know that. Any time that you sin against God, that sin is forgiven. But the consequence for your act is not forgiven. The consequence for what you have done is not forgiven. Until you get to God through Christ, and in that place, then your sin can be washed by His blood. And the blood of Jesus work only in the life of people who apply it. Because the blood of Jesus is just like a soap. You can be in the bathroom and come out and yet you are still dirty when you refuse to apply the soap. 
So you can be in church and yet you are condemned because you have not applied the blood of Jesus in the proper way by which you are. And Jesus is telling us today that the only way you need to apply this blood is by you opening the borders of your heart so that I come in. He said, I stand at the door of your heart. I know. If any man hear my voice and open, I will come in, I will be their God, and they will be my people. Rise up to your feet.